Okay, so here's a boss I completely forgot about, the Cuckoo Condor at the end of the Ruby Path in the Pyramid. And it's kind of unfortunate that I forgot about this, because once I was re-watching the footage and seeing what was going on, it's actually one of Nintendo handheld's better moments from its rogues gallery, which is nice to see because I thought it was just going to be bland and boring the whole way down. The Cuckoo Condor's design gets away from being entirely gross and uses the thematic elements of the other gross bosses but in a correct way, where it makes the boss look creepy and in a good way to build up the character of itself, the Cuckoo Condor, rather than just being overtly gross and hard to look at. And then the second form, when it turns into a droopy vulture, it again doesn't just dive right into being animated with drool and vomit and a bunch of other crap that, unfortunately, the other bosses are not loath to throw away in the vault of bad ideas. Plus, the way that you fight Cuckoo Condor is incredibly goofy and tries to be comedic, and it actually works because it's doing it in a correct way. The combat that you have to do in Phase 1 is that you have to constantly charge and hit the ornament that it's going up and down from the bottom of it while it throws electricity and saw blades down on the floor in an attempt to slide across the screen and hit Wario. That makes them easy to dodge, and the amount of visual noise and stuff that you're required to do doesn't end up just confusing the player to death, so you can juggle it pretty much instantly and not really have to think about it, because you're going to be spending half of your time airborne anyway, so it's not really that big of an issue. And plus, it just doesn't deal tons of damage and doesn't take up a lot of time in your damage animation. Once you manage to make Cuckoo Condor hit itself with its own ornament several times, the entire cuckoo clock breaks apart and reveals the condor itself, who then starts laying eggs and cracking open ducks in an effort to destroy Wario. The ducks aren't very good minions and will mostly just lackadaisically run across the battlefield until they are one hit killed by Wario, and that's kind of a good thing, because the point of this part of the boss fight is that you have to grab the eggs before they hit the ground, and then throw them to hit the top of Cuckoo Condor. The sort of bird hood ornament that was on top of the Cuckoo Clock before it was destroyed. This part of the boss fight can actually go pretty dang fast if you're quick on your feet and good with your response time, and the throw arc to hit the hood ornament on top of Cuckoo Condor is actually pretty 
easily accessible so you're not wasting a bunch of time just trying and guessing to throw at the sweet spot to hit it and just wasting all that time because once again this is a boss that goes on a time limit. Overall, the Cuckoo Condor is a marked improvement over Nintendo handheld's other bosses and one of the times when they actually use their creativity to a better end. The Cuckoo first form is really good design. It's complicated, it's goofy looking, and it's just cool to fight just because the electricity and the saw blades thing that it has because it's a cuckoo clock and trying to be all ornamental fits with the character and they don't completely break the difficulty curve. They give you stuff to avoid while you're trying to work and that's pretty much all you're looking for in a platformer boss. You don't need it to be super in your face and super intense because you need to try and do the platforming stuff to dish out damage and just making, giving us so much stuff to keep in mind can just confuse the player into being incredibly frustrated. Where this one hits sort of that sweet spot, the character design again is great. It uses the creepy grossness of the other bosses in an actually good way to heighten up the look of Cuckoo Condor without just making it overtly gross and bad looking. It adds a little bit of it so that it just, you know, gives the character design overall a bit more personality. The Condor himself, not as good, but it doesn't go for the grossness aspect that Cat Bat does, so I'm giving it a pass even though it looks generic, standard. I mean, it's a fine design, but they didn't really do all that much with it, and it looks like the effort that they put into to make the Condor look droopy kind of removed a lot of the interesting animations that the Condor could have had in the second phase, but maybe all the effort to make the creative design was spent on the first phase, and it definitely shows. Like, I just love the Cuckoo Clock's overall design. It, it's almost perfect for a platformer boss. Maybe a, a boss in any general 2D game. The combat isn't difficult. I mean, it could be a little bit more to hit the golden standard of satisfying but challenging, but it's a unique enough and it gives you enough to do in that two minute time spot that you need to beat Cuckoo Condor. And overall, it's just a nice, fun, little bit of a distraction right at the end of the ruby path that just ties it all together in a little bow. It's not the most spectacular boss in all of history, but it's definitely got a lot of nice touches and overall comes off as a really solid boss in a rogues gallery that has been feeling pretty lacking. So I do appreciate Nintendo Handheld putting in the effort, rounding out the details to make it a bit more nuanced of a boss, and just kind of learning from their mistakes from Cat Bat and Spoiled Rotten. It's a good showing, Nintendo Handheld. I kind of wish this was more your standard rather than an exception to the rule. 